Hey guys, how are you today? How was your day? How's your weekend? How was your weekend? It's Monday. Haven't seen you since Thursday. How was your weekend? Hey, baby girl. How was your weekend? What did you do? Hey, mama, mama, how are you, Val? Hey, Takia, Takia. Hey, how are you? How are you, good? So then again, the grandmother. Type that in, please. I missed it. Your grandmother is, what's going on with your grandmother? Good. Hey, Joyce, how are you? Candace, good, Val. What are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? Type that in about your grandmother again. I just really want to pray for you guys. I know um, we're doing the, okay, we're going to we're gonna pray for her. We're doing the dreams, um, but I kind of wanted to pray. Good, good, Val. Good, Val. Just wanted to pray because there's just some, some resistance that are going, that's, this has kind of been going on. And so I just kind of wanted to, did you, did you, hey man of God, how are you feeling now, Takia? How you feeling now? With all the rest you got, are you feeling better? <laughs> yeah, I took the braids out, as you can see, and I'm hemming my hair so I can put them back in. So I will be wearing a wrap for a couple of days. Hey, Fifi, how are you? How was your day? How was your weekend? What's going on with you guys? Good. Good, I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you, Mama. So what's going on with you guys? Be honest with me, please. Because I really want to pray. I just, I'm feeling some things. Um, Candace, you are on, right? Candace, you're on? You're on? Because I, I got your, your interpretation of your dream. Okay, boom. Got your interpretation of your dream and I want to address it. <clears throat> and I wanted to address this for everybody. To so we, When we talk about black or white, um, nothing is black or white. Hey, woman of God. Um, you guys know Alexis Mastin is having a dream, um, two-day dream coding, dream coding. Upsetting weekend, but we'll get through. We're going to pray for you. Did you? How did it go? So proud of you, woman of God. Hey, mama. How are you, Jacqueline? Um, and so I want you to take her class. And then I want you to take classes. I want you to take classes of multiple. Um, there isn't one way. There isn't one way. And so educate. I've taken um, dream classes. Um, I used to do some prophetic ministering for a online, really big ministry. And the way that they went about interpreting dreams and stuff was very different from anything else that I had heard. And it stretched me. Hey Amen. We all are, sir. We all are. Um, it really stretched me. Guys, stretching is good. When I, when I taught the, when I taught the, um, yeah. When I taught teens for years and years and years and years and years, I all I love you more. I always admonish them, admonish, admonish, and he hates that word. I always push them to ask questions. Just don't take it. When you're reading the word, ask your questions. Stop and be like, wait a minute. What is that? Because what's happening is you're you're being stretched. What's hap the, you're, you're, you're learning, you're, you're learning custom, you're getting deeper questions. Our brain was wired for questions. But if you want to find an answer, you have to pose a question to yourself because your brain is wired to answer questions. And so, hey, Shasta, Shasta. Yes, Joyce, you better come through. Those paintings are really pretty too. I don't know if y'all have gone to her store. Drop your link, please, mama. I love you, Shasta. Um, and so we have her, and I'm just going to pray for your Monday, but we have her um, interpretation of what she, this is bothering me. I try, guys. I try. Let me turn it down. Jesus. You know, um, when we talk about prophecy, you know, a lot of people prophesy music helps them, you know, it just, I get to a point and it's just, oh, anyway. Um, 
So you guys ready to get into this? I really want to, I really want to flesh this out a little bit so you can see what you couldn't see. Okay. And so I did not tell you who this was. Hey, Missy, Missy, were you supposed to text me today? Did you text me today? Did I miss it? Am I wrong? Am I off? I thought it was Monday. And I need to call your pastor. I have not done that. I'm doing that tomorrow morning. Okay. So, um, I apologize about that, but was I, I thought you said in the text that you were going to text me. You're going to text me a time. Let me go back. I could be wrong. Let me go back. Okay. All right. So when I get off, I'll text you too about your tomorrow. Okay. Um, or you can text me either way. Let's just, let's just talk. Okay. So am I allowed to say your name? Cause I already said it. So y'all remember the dream, um, Thursday was the last time we were on the dream with the stakes. Okay, Candace, woo, everybody say what's up, Candace, woo, Lord. Okay, um, so the dream with the stakes, that was our sister, okay? And so she has sent the interpretation of the dream and then she gave a little more information about the dream, about her situation, about the background. And so that's why things are not, black and white okay um so let me read you what she said i'm not sure if it matters much but i wanted to clarify two things in the dream number one steak i love steak <laughs> but i like my steak medium rare <laughs> the steak in my dream did not look like it was cooked that way but when i watch others eat the steak i seen that it was medium rare and very tender but it did not have grill lines, so I passed. But they ate and enjoyed, which I'm sure I would have too. Number two, one cousin who was at the table eating steak is a minister of music at a church. He has lived a homosexual lifestyle, and I'm not sure if he still does, but in the dream, he was across the table from me eating, and I think there was judgment there too. Here's what I think. If there is a theme... I think that it doesn't matter what it looks like. And she put an exclamation point. As one cousin said in the dream, God is going to do what he said, cousin Raven. Even the statement about my mom, which I thought was totally random, even fits the theme, the theme of judgment. Not judging properly. Judgment, guys, is neutral. Are you guys taking notes? Judgment is neutral, right? The judgment can be in your favor or not in your favor. Judgment in itself is neutral. When we bless God, we are judging God. When the leper turned, went back to Jesus, and the other nine had kept on their merry way, he turned and he blessed him. In the Greek, that word means he judged him. When you bless God, it is a form of judging him. It is a form of saying the gavel in my life has banged on the table of my life and you are who you say you are. It is final. It is over. You, you are the God of my life. You're the God of my soul. Nothing about you is evil. So when we turn and bless God, when we turn and remember him, that is a type of judgment. And so in your own life, you have to be, you have to understand judging, judgment is neutral. You are the same way you're making decisions. A decision is a sign of you judging. If I do something or I don't do something, you judged it favorably or unfavorably. Judging in itself is neutral and we judge all day long. Do you trust somebody or do you not trust them? It's a judgment. It's a decision. Judging the, what is the, what was the decision of the judge? That's a judgment. Is this making sense? Okay. I didn't mean to yell at you. All right. Um, he said that my mother was not a materialistic person, which she wasn't. And it is something that has definitely passed down to me that she's not materialistic. So Candace is not materialistic. It matters to material people how things look, how big, expensive, fancy, but on the contrary, it doesn't matter to someone who's not materialistic. Going back and reading the scripture in the New Living Translation, remember she's reading um, uh, Kings where Elijah was being fed by the raven and by the brook. God's commandment to Elijah was to drink from the brook and eat what the ravens brought you or what the ravens bring you. For I have commanded them to bring you food. <laughs> 
I've commanded them to bring you food. So I definitely should have ate what it, but what it looked like stopped me from partaking. And even who was at the table eating across from me had me thinking twice about eating. When we first did the dream, all of that information was missing. She didn't say anything about a cousin sitting across from her, but as she is going back and bringing this in the presence of God, now she's judging the dream and the wisdom of God with the help of other people. But remember, guys, it's just help. It's just help. There's so much when we're interpreting dreams, we're seeing through a glass darkly. That's why dreaming is prophetic. And so when people bring you their dreams, they're not bringing you everything. And so you can submit to them prophetically. You are submitting a suggestion. It is not the Holy Grail. I hope you're taking notes. Your prophecy is not the Holy Grail. At the end of the day, your prophecy, your suggestions of what the Lord is telling you should push them into the presence of God. Because ultimately, they're the ones that have to war for the prophecy. How do we war for the prophecy? We put it on. We become it. We submit to it. That's how we war. Warring is the doing part of what God is saying. Doers of the word. Doers of the revelation. Do is this making sense? Doers of the affirmations of Jehovah. And so when I pray or prophesy or whatever over you, ultimately it should be shoving you to want to know more. It should be shoving you into a place of prayer. It should be shoving you into a place of worship so that you can be grounded. To, gone is the day. Gone is the day. Hear me when I say this. When somebody tells you, what thus saith the Lord, but you're not convinced. And that's when I hear people say, the prophet told me. She said, she said, she said, he said, he said. Why are we not saying God said? Why are we not saying God said? The, the job of the prophet, baby girl, is not to convince you. The job of the mailman is not to convince you to pay a bill. The job of the mailman is not to convince you to write a letter. The job of the mailman is not to convince you to check your mail. The job of the mailman is to deliver the mail, period. Does this make sense? That's the job of the mailman. The job of the mailman is to not, is to not convince you of anything. That's why we have to understand voices of prophets. We've got to have the filters, all that good stuff. But when I'm talking to people and, and, and I'm listening to what comes out of my mouth, well, he said, well, she said, well, they said, what did God say? Gone is the day. So when, remember, we talked about how do we receive the prophetic? How do we receive what God is saying in the dream? Right? How do we say is what when God has said what God has said, you need to declare God has said. Yeah, that's not that's may, that may or may not be necessarily true, right? When we look at the full depth of the prophetic, when we look, remember, we talked about this before, the charisma of the Holy Spirit. Nerissa, I may need you to go back and find it. And I can't tell you what it's called because, you know, I named these things weird names. So I have no idea where anything is on here. The charisma of the Holy Spirit is a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge and prophecy. The issue is most people don't decipher what it is. When somebody calls you up front and they lift your hands, it may not be prophetic. It may be a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge. The foretelling of God. Yeah, this is, there's levels and dimensions. That's why you got to trust voices. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It has not entered into the heart of man. And so what God will do is he will use the voice of a vessel to begin to open up atmospheres and dimensions and portals over you. Just because you are not aware of it, your spirit is aware of it and has been waiting for the right timing. A voice can come by you 
and your baby will leap. And you didn't even know you were pregnant. Is this making sense? <laughs> we have to understand, remember, the charisma of the Holy Spirit. You, When somebody's talking, you should be saying to yourself, is this a word of wisdom? Is this a word of knowledge? Is this prophecy? Practice, 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 practice. We got to know what it is. And I hope this is making sense. And so, yes, I call myself the confirming prophet. I'm not really saying anything new to you. Um, that's a good question. How can we decipher? We have to understand what a word of wisdom is, what a no word of knowledge is, and what prophecy is. What prophecy is. Remember, we uh, I would that all men prophesy. Hey, Miss Patrice, all men prophesy. But not everybody is sitting in the seat or the office of the prophet. The office of the prophet is so much different than us just getting on here, praying prophetically, speaking prophetically, and declaring prophetically. The Bible, the scripture is prophetic. When I read the scripture, I'm prophesying. Do you guys understand that? When I read the scripture verbatim, I am prophesying. When I preach the word, I am prophesying. I'm giving comfort. I am edifying. Is this making sense? But the office of the prophet is the foretelling of the heart of God. It is releasing the sound of the trumpet. It is releasing the mysteries that have been veiled. The dark mysteries are coming to light through the mouth of a vessel. A mouth of a vessel. But even still, it can still be seen through a glass darkly. You, it's up to the hearer. It is up to the person who is receiving whatever from prayer to the scripture. We will be so much further along. I hope you're, you're, if you are on an intercessory team at your church, I need you to start taking notes. If you are in a, on an intercessory team, you know, that prays like in zip codes or over territories, I need you taking notes. There is not enough precedence put on the preached word in this day and age. People will wait till the preached word is finished pre being preached so that we can get to the good stuff. We can get to the prophecy. This is the comfort for the people. This is used for the edification for the people. The foretelling of God is in the scripture. And it's so cool because the foretelling is foretelling individually. When, when, when one person is proclaiming the scripture, it is received differently by everybody that's in the pew. We've got to bring back the love for the preached word. How do I judge? How do, yep, how do I judge? I'm, I, this is just anesism. How do I judge if I preached a good word? This is anesism. Because as a preacher, we judge ourselves very harshly. Y'all know what I'm talking about. How do I judge if I have preached a good word? If I have preached this thing, how God want it preached when nobody wants prayer? When after the preaching is done, the, 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 the provoking of the spirit of God has already happened in the pew. That's how I judge. Was I, did, did, did my anesisms and my antics get in the way of the message of God? The preaching is a prophetic. Come here, choir members and praise team members. Your singing is prophetic. You are decreeing, you are declaring the heart of the Father, and a gathering of people. And so if we had such precedents put on every portion of the gathering, we would see so much more break out in the lives of the people Tuesday, Monday through Saturday. We have to put precedents on God is speaking. God is speaking when the praise team sings. That is God speaking. 
That's not people singing. Do y'all see that? God is speaking. God is speaking. God is speaking. God is speaking when the pastor is preaching. God is speaking. God is speaking. Oh, you preach a good word. You preach a good word. Did you hear the Lord? Did you hear the Lord? Even if nobody jumped up and there was like, you know, wasn't no, uh, and I said uh, that God, uh, and, and no, 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 no. Even if the people just sat there and they not one amen was whispered because the presence of God was so heavy because the people were receiving the downloads of the heart of the father in the pew. And nobody screamed and nobody shouted and nobody did cartwheels. Is it still a good word? Was church still off the chain? How do we judge if it's off the chain or if it's good? If lives are changing, is your life changing? That's all we need to be concerned with. I don't care about the delivery of the worship. I don't care about the delivery of the preach word. I don't care who it comes from. I don't care where it comes from. Am I changing in this moment? Am I looking for the voice of God? Where the voice of God is, there is transformation. Where the voice of God is, there is edification. Where the voice of God is, there is comfort. And so intercessors, and that's why I said, I hope you're taking notes. This is one of the things that we need to be praying on the forefront when we gather that the people of God are looking for God. That the people of God are honoring the voice of God, that we don't get caught up in a vessel. We're not looking to hear sounds. We're not looking for entertainment. We are looking for transformation. God make the people hungry for transformation. Make the people hungry for transformation. When transformation, when transformation happens, we're praying. We're praying with you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that the man of God is asking for wisdom. And according to your scripture, you said, Father, that if any of us would ask, you will give liberally and without reproach. And so, Father, as his intercessors, we receive wisdom on his behalf tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Does it make sense? And so... When, are y'all hearing me? Intercessors, this is strategy for your church. This is strategy for your organization. A lot of us are not in four walls, you know what I mean, kind of things, but you are part of the church. So when you're praying for the people, God let the people be hungry for transformation, however transformation happens. Let your people be looking for you. Gone is the day where we're saying where, you know, people are telling us things and we just leave it at that. People told us some things. Yeah, I listened to, you know, the prophecies I've got on my phone and, you know, the prophet so-and-so has said this and then prophet so-and-so has said this and then prophet so-and-so has said this. So did they say it or did God say it? I need you to choose. Because if God said it, I need you to transform. Yes. Yes. No, no, you're fine. Remind me. Leah, Father, in the name of Jesus, we're just going to do it now. Where you are, let's please pray for Leah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up to you, Leah. We lift up to you her situation. We're praying for comfort and strength and power to come from the family members. Father, we thank you for a, a girl, like a roar in their bellies to begin to arise. They are not going to take this. They are not going to wait around and sit on their hands, but they're going to lift their hands and the sound of worship is going to begin to turn and to change things. They will not just um, 
They will not just think, they will not just, you know, say within themselves, but they will begin to lift their hands and they will begin to prophesy her into her future seat. They will begin to prophesy her into her, her, her ministering seat. They will begin to prophesy her into her relational seat. We decree and declare that this family shall rally around this girl with the sound of worship and the sound of prayer. Father Jehovah Rapha, God of Leah's wholeness. She is just not healed. She is whole. And so God, we go to the root. We go to the very root, the root, the root, the root, even that transcends guys, the root that goes beyond this baby. The, the root that goes to the generations, the root that goes to chromosomes that were handed down and that were handed down and that were handed down and that were handed down. Father, we thank you for healing through all of these chromosomes. Father, we thank you for healing and wholeness in this line, in the name and in the blood of Jesus. And we cover every baby that will come forth out of this line. We pray for the future that is coming forth out of this line. And so, Father, we bless you for Leah's long life. That it will not be a life full, filled with medication. It will not be a life filled with um, uh, 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 surgery after surgery after surgery. But Father, we thank you for wisdom and miracles. Wisdom and miracles. Wisdom and miracles in the name of Jesus. That she will not get with doctors. That she will not be around doctors that would just say things and put her on medication and all that sort. No, wisdom and miracles. Hallelujah. And so, Father, thank you that this family is now put at ease, even their conversation between each other. Let it not be conversation that is down in the mouth, meaning, oh, poor baby, I just can't believe she's going through this. She's just so young. She's just so young to go. No, she's not. She's not too young to go through this. If God is putting her through this, if God is making her go through this at this young age, God is pressing out something in her. And so, Father, we pray into the favor over this little girl. We pray into the unctioning over this little girl. We pray into the anointing that you're doing. Doing. We thank you, God, that you're going to use her at a young age, that you are introducing your power to her at a young age, that she will see you and know you and proclaim you for herself. In Jesus' name. And it ain't no feeling sorry. Ain't no down in the mouth about this. God knows what he's doing. And we pray into the mind of God. We pray into the sovereignty of God. We trust the sovereignty of God. We trust the intelligence of God. And we thank you, Father, for what you're doing in Leah's life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hey, man of God. In Jesus' name. All right. So I don't remember what I was saying. Amen. 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 And we're, we're going to keep praying for you. We're going to keep praying for you. Um, praying with you, rather. Praying with you that um, even in your prayers, woman of God, for your family, that you will begin to, my God, that you will begin to structure their conversation, that this is a hard time, guys. I am not discounting what they're going through, having to look at a little baby. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. It is hard. Your emotions are there, but we're, we're placing a crown of authority on you. We are putting the scepter of authority in your hand, and we are saying that the direction of conversation, the direction of prayer, you will cause that road, those directives. You will birth those directives out in prayer. We decree to declare that even for your family, that this will be a season where, thank you, Father, that through this, that more prayer it will be organized over the family. More declarations will be organized over the family, meaning that family members, more family members are going to come together and get on the phone and pray or email and pray, text message and pray that families, but we're talking about this family. This is your, for your family, take it too. That families will begin to arise and begin to cover their line, begin to arise and begin to cover this day in the name and in the blood of Jesus. And so we thank you God for the favor that's over over this family to go through this, that they will not go through this broken, busted, disgusted, that they will not go through this disempowered and dismembered, but they will come through this with power and empowered and encouraged in Jesus name, in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't even remember what we were saying. I was getting ready to pray, but I'm not, I'm not going to pray about that yet. <laughs> so what were we talking about? Because I don't forgot Jesus. I forgot what you're talking about. Y'all help me. I forgot what you're talking about. Yes, so intercessors. Is this making sense on how to how to pray in your groups? We must be praying that people want 
the voice of God, that people are hungry for the presence of God. And that we judge what God is saying. And if we have judged that God has said this, that the people of God will be so hungry to transform war, transform for this thing, to morph into this thing, to become what thus saith the Lord in this season in Jesus name. In Jesus name. So even over you guys, I am prophesying over you. If you have more than seven prophetic words over your life that have not come to pass, or just words, not even prophetic words. Maybe God told you something in your prayer closet. Maybe you've had a reoccurring dream, whatever. If you have more than seven entities, seven, seven, what am I trying to say? Seven situations, prophecies, answers, all that kind of stuff over your life that haven't come to pass. Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight, we begin to pray your people into the place of warring, real warring over their prophecy, over the word of the Lord, over the yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That your people will begin to war over the yes. What your people, God, have judged as yes, that your people will now go into the earth realm and begin to transform, decree, pray, prophesy, that they will begin to become, that they will begin to see themselves more in what you've said father instead of going into your presence and saying oh god but you said god i'm tired of waiting god will win this manifest god 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 but father tonight we're praying your people into the place of wisdom number one wisdom on how to put it on wisdom on what needs to fall off wisdom on what we need to walk away from wisdom of what we need to walk into wisdom for the finishing anointing wisdom to keep going wisdom fortitude energy in the name of jesus and so where there is no clarity where there is no clarity, where some of you have been going back and forth over, you know, well, well, I'm living this, but you know, I'm praying for this, but I'm living this, I'm praying for this, I'm living this, I'm praying for this, I just don't know, I just don't know. We break that vacillating spirit. We decree and declare that you will not vacillate, that you are in the valley of decision tonight. You're in the valley of judgment and you are judging what God has said as being true in the name of Jesus. And so God, over these next couple of days, ending 2017, that the people on this scope and the people who will come back and watch this scope, that they will settle themselves in the true word of God. And so I decree over you every word of the Lord that's not true, every word of the Lord that was not for you, every word of the Lord, not necessarily a false prophecy, because that's already broken in, the, in Jesus name. But hey, Father, where people have joined themselves to the false and didn't join themselves to the truth, right now we begin to sever it. We cause there to be separation and that they will know with clarity what is the truth of the Lord. They will know with clarity what is the engrafted word of the Lord. They will make their election sure in this season, in these next couple of days, in the name and in the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And then this is what I'm saying. I know y'all may not have heard this a whole lot, but just, just flow with me. Y'all know I'm not deep. I'm very shallow. It's like super shallow. Y'all are deep. I'm not. Y'all pray for your girl that I become deep because I'm not. I carry people in prayer. I carry you in prayer. We are in covenant. We are in covenant. And so a lot of times people will come and give me a word, but it's not for me. It is for the person I'm carrying. I hope this is making sense. And so sometimes we get a word and we're like, rah, 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 rah. it's not for me. But if I'm in covenant with you, if I'm in covenant with you, like for real, for real covenant, not this fake stuff. If I'm in covenant with you for real, for real, then I carry you. I carry you. We are infused. And because I carry you and we're infused and I carry you in prayer, come on, I was just talking to Alexis about this the other day. When people give you, because we're in covenant, free reign to pray over them and you don't know what the will of God is, you can become a Sarai. And what happens with Sarai is you become friendly fire. Friendly fire still kills. Friendly fire is still dangerous. And so, Lord, please blow by me. Please come by me and set me straight, especially when I'm praying over other people, especially when I'm praying for other people. Do not let me pray anything out of season. Do not let me pray them into an Ishmael moment. Help me, Father. Give me dreams. Give me revelation. 
I know I got a word and you know, people were like, I see you dancing. I see you dancing and I just see you dancing. I can't dance. I cannot sing. I can't do any of that stuff. I just don't do it. I just don't, Jesus. I don't shout at church. I can't. I don't have any rhythm. Just leave me alone. I clap off beat, whatever, right? And then we're like, I see you with this dance studio and you have this dance studio and you're teaching people to dance. Right? It was for somebody that I went to, right? It was somebody that was with me in my church. Right. <laughs> yep. And I began to pray her into her dance studio. She has a dance studio now. I never told her that she got the word. I prayed. I prayed for that word in her. Because the Holy Spirit connected it. I see you. I see you worshiping. And you have flags. I can't do flag ministry. That's an abomination. I'll be hitting people with the flags. But who? But who with me? Nope. It was for somebody that I carry. It was for God was saying, this. she's, she's never going to hear this word. Is this making sense to you? I can be a mailman as an intercessor. If I can be a distribution center in the natural, why can't I be a distribution center in the spirit? God, give me resources, give me money so that I can sow them, so that I can give them to your people. And so I'm a storehouse for your glory. I'm a storehouse of your resources. Then let me be a storehouse for answers and for prayer. Is this making sense? And so don't discount, you know, some people is just off. Some is just, you know, they was talking to the person behind me. When you're in a setting, can I just help you guys? If you're, you know, if you're in a setting where like everybody's kind of sitting down or something, you, you hearing a lot. And if people are pulling, it, it can be, it can be a lot. And certainly when you're preaching, you got all these things, error, there is an error of margin, margin of error. I said that backwards. There is. And as you work through it, as you get courage and as you move in faith, you'll get a little bit better. I'm just being honest. I told y'all when I was doing the prophecies, you know, for people online, for that ministry online, the first prophecy, we can, we can ask for that to be a resource. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I'm going to say this too, but I'm not saying this for you, Narissa. I'm just going to use this as an example. What Narissa said, I'm not saying it for her. I'm going to use it as an example. Dear prophets. People who pray, people, people who pray prophetically. Every now and then, every now and then, you'll be saying something to people. And they're looking at you like, that ain't me. That ain't me. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm good. What you talking about? What you talking about? And really what the Lord was having a conversation with them about what he kept them from. You didn't even know you had cancer. You didn't even know you had cancer. God healed you. Sometimes, and I'm just using this as an example, Narissa. I'm not saying this is you. I'm not going there. When, when it's time for you to have babies, and then you hit a hard The word of the Lord comes to anchor you. Come here, Sarah and Abraham. You shall be a father of many nations. You ain't got not a man kid. Not one. None. 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 But God said you're going to have kids. It came to anchor you. You never know what's out in front of you. I have gotten words that held me in crazy seasons. And I would have given up and I would have walked away. But the Lord said, let me, let me just give you a secret. And this thing is going to come and anchor your mind. It's going to come and anchor, it's going to anchor you because you and me can go somewhere. And I need you to stay in this area right here. So every now and then, God will let me, is this true? Is this, okay, let me help you. 
my son, um, my son is my second kid. My first kid, she was nine when I had her. I mean, she was nine when I had him. Um, when You know, when they're in the hospital, they go back like day three and they get like their first vaccination. Like day seven, my son was twitching. Was twitching. And I remember, you know, I would see him do it and I was like, okay, you know, babies, you know, they do it, whatever, babies. And he just, he just started twitching, twitching, twitching. And um, I had a really bad experience with the epidural. I, I was twitching very bad. I was twitching involuntarily. People had to leave the room. Nobody told me this was a side effect. I mean, I'm just in the bed just like, twitching, twitching, twitching. I, I cannot control my limbs. It was scary. So I'm looking at this little kid sitting in the carrier and he's twitching. So I take him to the emergency room and the doctor brushes me off. He brushes, he's like, no, you've had children before. This is normal. They're motor skills. They're motor skills. I took the church up. I took the church up. I took my child to the church for the first time to see, you know, people at the church. And I remember the lady that was over me in prayer. She was the church administrator, Romanza. And I, you know, I took the baby in there and she was like, oh, the baby. And she held the baby and she held Israel and she was holding him, and then she began to speak in tongues, and she began to declare his healing. She began to declare his healing. He never twitched after that. Twitching was gone. What do I think it was? I believe that he was battling, that what was going on was there was a battle with ADD that was trying to get into his body. Those things that were in me for that epidural from his um, uh, shots those first days. That's what that battle was. He was twitching. He was twitching. Yeah, autism. I may have said that wrong. Y'all know what I mean. Something went right. And so a lot of times a voice will come by and begin to call things out that either we suppressed or we didn't even know was even present. But again, you got to, you, you are responsible to take that into the presence of God. Mm -hmm. You, 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 yep, you got to take that into the presence of God. And let the Lord begin to deal with you. And you'll know, you'll go into the presence of God. And as you begin to worship, as you begin to, you know what I mean? Yep. And a lot of times we are. I remember my my daughter's dad had a baby and, you know, we weren't really talking. And um, and I remember I was just like moving around and I just began to pray for this child. I began to pray for this baby. I just began to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. I didn't know she had CF. Cystic fibrosis. Because black kids usually don't get it. And I just begin to pray and I 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 begin to pray. And so, guys, the supernatural that we're walking in and the, the Lord in us, we're walking with, you know, a lot of times we don't know what's going on with us. We don't know what God is keeping us from. You don't know how many accidents had your name on it. You don't know how many diseases had your name on it. No idea. No idea, but God. And so, but again, what's the theme? You are responsible. You have the last say on whether this is God or it's not. Yes, you better come on, Erica. Did y'all hear what I said? So a lot of times, this is, why I'm, this is what I just prayed over you guys. A lot of you guys have been sitting on the fence because you have not judged clearly and succinctly, was this God or was it not? So it's neutral. What happens in neutral? What happens when we're in neutral? Anything goes? What else happens in neutral? You don't go, no movement, 
nothing stuck can't move nothing idleness stagnation have any of you guys said any of these, any of these words over yourself in 2017 have anybody said i don't feel like nothing's going on i feel like i'm stuck i feel like stagnation even in an area even in a place it's got to be more. There's like no momentum. Like, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And what, what it could be is not that God hit a wall. Come on, Shasta. It may not be, you know, we're like, God, come on, guys. How do we pray? Oh, my gosh. And stagnation will rob you of your energy. If you're taking notes, I don't want to pray this. Or I want to pray this over you. If you are bored if you are stuck, if you are in neutral, it is sucking the life out of you. Neutral is such a dangerous place. Why? Because even if I judge in error, even if I judge wrong, God, I made a decision. And so as I'm traveling down in my error, God is going to correct me. So I will clearly see the way to go. When I don't make a decision to do anything, I'm just sitting there. I'm just, I'd rather you be hot or cold. I'd rather you be moving or doing something. But while, come on, if a car sits in neutral, did it go anywhere? No. But did it use up all of its gas? Yes. If a car sits in neutral, it's still on. It still has the capability to move. It should be moving. A car is not designed to idle long. A car is not designed to just be sitting in neutral, to be sitting there on. So you didn't go nowhere, but you drained all the energy. I don't know. I'm just like, feel like I don't have any energy in my body. I just don't feel motivated. I don't know we talk like this. This is me. Let me just talk about me because you don't talk like that. I don't know. I just feel like I feel dull. I just feel like but you haven't made a decision. It's not that God's yes is not yes. It's not that God's yes was a delay or denial. It was you have not judged. Was this the will of God and was this the word of God? Yay or nay, baby. If it's not, move away. If it is, move into. Make a decision. Oh God, I just need another, I just need you to show me. Oh God. What if it's unfair? Then you move in it. All things work together. You are judging it to be unfair, but his ways are not your ways, man of God. And, he, and his ways are not your ways. We can't see the whole picture. He's looking at the masterpiece while you're living in the pieces of the mosaic. And so while it may feel like, this is unfair, come here, Job, this is unfair, come here, Abram, you want me to leave my family and go to a place that you're going to show me unfreaking fair come here, Joseph, you want me to leave out of, to get, uh, to get thrown in a pit, sold into slavery at Potiphar's house, now I'm in prison, where is the fairness in all of that? Come here, Ruth, you lost my husband? Come here. Come on, Esther. I ain't got no mama. I ain't got no daddy. Come here, Daniel. I'm, I'm excellent, but I'm taken into captivity and babble. Come on, guys. We, we, we can't because we're not supposed to. But when, but here's the thing. When I peruse the scripture, I see the pattern of the father. There is no unfairness in God. So what are you looking at? And I'm not picking on you, man of God, because this is really good. But I'm asking the question for everybody. If you believe that there is no unfairness in God, then is it really unfair? Are you can, or is it you just can't see what you can't see? What may look unfair may be the process of your promotion. Behind the lion's den was promotion. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego come out of the um, come out of the fiery furnace. What was on the other side of that? Promotion. 
It's okay not to know why, Pinky Sunday. You better come on through, woman of God. Come on, guys. Joseph in prison. He he, he freaking interpreted the dreams. He's like, guys, remember me. <laughs> remember me. The Bible says for a space of two years, he sat in that prison waiting for them to remember him. What was on the other side? Promotion. Esther, promotion. Ruth, promotion. Daniel, promotion. Uh, is this making sense? Come here, poor old Gideon. You in a little bitty cave. You in the least of the least. My family is the least. And I'm the least of the least of the least of the least. Promotion, promotion, promotion. What is the pattern of God? God moves mightily in what looks like it's unfair. God specializes in what looks like it's unfair. It looks like you're losing. It looks like you're the underdog. It looks like people are pillaging you. It looks like they're going to get away with it again. God specializes in that. And so let me take my eyes off of the situation and let me put my eyes on the one who's sovereign in the situation. Man may think they're getting over on me, but this, this is the road to my promotion. Take it. We talked about this a couple of days ago. Promotion hurts. Promotion hurts. I don't know what we think. God, promote me. God, promote me. God, make my name great. Promote me. Okay. And then three days later, you're like, why am I in so much pain? Because that's your promotion, boo. That's your promotion. Climb into a higher elevation. You're going to get some bruises and some scrapes. You going to get people going to leave you because they can't climb with you. This is lonely. I'm so lonely. Oh, I'm so lonely. <laughs> Promotion. 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 Come on, guys. I don't know where we got that. We talked about it. I don't know where we got this idea that promotion is so lollipops and candy canes. And everybody's going to be like, look at you. You're being promoted. I'm being promoted. <laughs> <laughs> look at you, Miss America. No, you gonna look like you in rags with roaches. Promotion. I don't know where I came up with that. It just kind of, it's not talked about. But when we look at the pattern of God, God does not work outside of this pattern. He prepares a table before your enemies for you. Your enemies are really his enemies, so he's really showing, he's flexing his muscle with his enemy. God is always in control. He is sovereign. He is sovereign. And so, man of God, for this is for anybody, thank you for saying that, though. For anybody, if you feel like it's just been unfair, if 2017 has been unfair, 2016, 2015, 2014, your whole life, you're like, this is unfair, this is unfair, this is unfair, come here, Esther, unfair. Come here, Ruth, unfair. Come here, Gideon, unfair. Come here, Moses, oh my gosh, unfair. Unfair. Jesus. How are you going to be born and everybody know that ain't your daddy? Unfair. So he grew up in a life of being different, not fitting in. Unfair. Yes. And then he does all of these crazy, miraculous, wonderful, oh my gosh. And then they say, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. <laughs> Where's the fairness in that? Like, bruh, right? David, right? Running from his enemies, running from Saul, who's not even his enemy. He loves him. He loves him. He want to take his life because he's jealous. Really because God has disqualified him. Where is the fairness in that? There isn't. It, 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 the fairness is not for the natural eye. Yes. God knows what he's doing. In all of these instances, what do we see? What is the theme in all of these instances? Every All of these biblical prophetic narratives that I just spoke over you, 
What is the theme? What's the theme? For those who will endure to the end, she'll reap a reward. You better come on, Erica. Paying for promotion and purpose. You better come on, Larissa. Keep going. What's the theme? What's the theme? Come on, guys. Elevation and promotion. Okay. Keep going. What's the theme? Glory. You better come on. Glory. No, I'm just playing. Perspective. Mm hmm I ask questions if you're on here and you're like, why are you asking questions? I ask questions because I'm all about building courage and faith. So, say it. God isn't taken by, by surprise. Process. It's glory for the most high in his children. Yes. Keep going, guys. What's the theme? Perspective. What is the perspective? God working things out behind the scene. Yes. Keep going. What is the theme? Trust in God. All for God's glory. The theme? In all of these instances, the process, which is oftentimes painful, is necessary for promotion. You better come through. You better, it, it is. You better come through. Yes. Hey. Baby girl. Yes. God is still in control. The theme. Y'all ready? The theme. It's not who am I, it's what are you. All of these people went through craziness, not for themselves. Joseph saved much people alive. Ruth, this is the beginning of the line of Jesus. Esther, she was, she not only, you know, the time of Mordecai, the Jews, we said this before, she was the stepmother to the king that let Nehemiah go build the wall. Jesus, clearly, she's Jesus. <laughs> Daniel, he was in captivity. We are still deciphering. We are still deciphering the prophecy that Daniel got after that 21 day fast. Moses, clearly, right? Abram, Abraham. We are living, we are still living in their promotion. We are living in their, you're still living in the promotion of Abraham. You're still living in the promotion of Joseph. Esther. Ruth, we're still living in their promotion. We're living in their purpose. We're still living in their process. It's not who are you, it's what are you. And ultimately, the what you are is you are a weapon in the quiver of God. You are poured out into the earth so that other people can live as a result of your process, as a result of your promotion. You are a portal of glory. You are a portal of the plan of God. And so we have to stop looking at me, me, why me, why, why me, 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 me. Why not? You portal of glory, you. Why not? Yes. I hope that made sense. We've got to see. Yep. We've got to see everything so differently. Yeah. We've got to see. As best we can. Thine kingdom come. Thine will be done. Yeah, Portal of Glory, you better come on now, P of G. <laughs> you P 
pog. You know, people be like, woman of God. That still messes with me when I'm like, they be like, hey, wog. I'm like, what is a wog? <laughs> You're a pog. <laughs> You're a portal of glory, you pog, you. Okay. Anyway, I write, <laughs> as best you can, thine kingdom come, thine will be done. Then kingdom come, thine will be done. That's what I am. That's what you are. Did y'all catch that? I'm not just praying it. That's what I am. Thine kingdom come, thine will be done. Portal of glory. Portal of glory. Portal of glory portal of glory. So my purpose here is not who I am, it's what I am. A highway for your kingdom to come. A portal of for your will to be done. A vehicle to transfer your presence. To transfer your word. To transcribe your will. It's not who I am. It's what I am. Because we're already inside of the who. I am that I am. And that is what you live. And him is how you move. And in him is how you have your very being. So the who was covered. Did y'all catch that? The who is already covered. Who am I? In him you live. In him you move. In him you have your being or your existence. In him your personality will come forth. In him your character will bloom. In him your name will emerge. In him. So as I'm moving inside of all of this I am that I am in all the dimensions of whatever that all that means, right? It's not who am I, it's what am I? You're a highway, Missy, for the will of God to be done. Your mouth, your eyes, your hands, your feet, your intellect, everything about you is a highway. Everything about you is a highway. That's why the enemy wants to get on you so bad. That's why the enemy messes with you. Because why he wants to get on that highway of glory. He doesn't necessarily want to shut the portal down. He didn't want to shut, right? He, the enemy didn't want to shut the garden down. He wanted to take rulership of the portal. He wanted to take rulership of the garden. So he doesn't, he's not trying to come and shut the portal down. He's trying to use the portal. He's trying to use the highway. It's not who I am. It's what I am. Yeah. <laughs> Does it make sense? So that's why we got to make sure we're cleaned up. What's going on? What's, what am I doing? What am I not doing? That's right. He will not use my portal. The bus stops here and you're getting off. That's no, playing. But it's true. It's kind of true. So we've been on an hour. We've been on an hour. Um, I just want to, I just want to pray over your week. This is a holiday week. Um, holiday, holy days. We're in the holy days. I don't care what kind of shenanigans, <laughs> what pagan, what crap, whatever. We decree that these are holy days. And I'm decreeing over you that God's going to use you. I'm decreeing over you that at dinners, when you go, drop-ins, whatever you're doing, that God's going to use you. That God's going to use you to create a highway where there has not been a highway. That God's going to use you to pioneer a way for some people in your families, your friends, that they will see the Lord. Thank you. 
almost forgot. We're going to pray over you, okay? Um, that this will not be weak for those of you who dread being around your family. <laughs> that you won't, you won't go into that this week. That this week God's going to lay. Yes. That God's going to, um, he's going to lay people on your heart. And you're going to minister mightily to them. So I'm praying the prophetic for them into you. I'm praying insight and discernment. It ain't going to be that deep. You're not going to, you know, thank you. You're not going to be like laying people out and, you know, pouring Crisco on people, you know. Um, we, we, we're, did we pray for your grandmother? Yeah. But even, but even wherever you're going, man of God, wherever you're going, cause I wasn't invited either. <laughs> wherever you're going, God's going to use you. Wherever you're going, God's going to use you. Val, wherever you're going, God's going to use you. Wherever you're going, God's going to use you. Wherever you're going, God's going to use you. But I am praying for people who will be by themselves. You know, there are a lot of people who will be by themselves, you know, by choice. Yes. Um, so, yes. God is going to use you. God has need of you over this holiday, over these holy days, that wherever you go, I'm praying the joy of the Lord in your spirit, that you will not be infected by things that are going around. Um, the, the lady that you're getting ready to pray for, Joyce. Um, that things that are going around in your external environment will not infiltrate, will not infiltrate who you really are, what you really are. And so Pinky 757, I'm taking what you just said out of your mouth and crumbling that. This is going to be easy because you're going to be flowing in your anointing. You're going to be flowing in your anointing. And the love of God and the compassion of God for the hard places are going to overrule what, what, what you think. They're going to overrule how you feel. You're going to feel the push, the heart of the Father to go into the hard places. And so if that's for you, just take it. There are some hard rooms that you guys are going to go into. There are some hard seats that you're going to sit in. And I'm praying that the compassion of the Father, the love of the Father, and the heart of the Father is going to drive you. It's going to drive you. You're not playing about this Christian life anymore. You're not playing. You understand that people are hurting. And the same way that God came and saved us and swallowed us and sozoed us and cared for us and comforted us is the same way that we want him to do it even for our worst enemy. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, that moves us. That moves you. Hallelujah. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for driving your people. Thank you for compassion coming over all of your people in the name of Jesus. Not just when we go to family, but when we're at the Walmart, when we're in the grocery store, when people are mean and rude, that the compassion of the Father, that in that moment, we're saying, thank you, God, for alerting me who to pray for. I decree and declare that your prayers, your smile, your compassion, your love, your decision to pay for somebody's lunch is going to pull somebody off of the ledge of depression, the ledge of darkness, the ledge of suicide in this particular uh, uh, cycle of holy days. God is using you. God is using you, how you are, where you are, with who you are. God is using you. And so tonight, God, your people are saying yes. Your people are saying yes. We pray for Narissa's grandmother. We pray for the whole family, Father. We pray for comfort. We pray for comfort for grandmother. We thank you, God, for the matriarch of this family. We pray, God, for the systems of her body. We're praying, God, we understand the cycle of life. Father, we're covering this family. We bathe this family in prayer. Narissa, we, we say that the word of prayer is in your mouth. Watch what you say. Watch what you say. Go into the presence of God and ask him to fill your mouth with his will. And that's what I want you to do. She's, she's young, guys. She's, she's a young lady. I want you to do that all the days of your life. Hear me when I say this. All the days of your life, ask the Lord to fill your mouth with his will. God, don't let me speak anything outside of your will. 
even in conversation. Fill my mouth with your will, God. Fill my mouth. Fill my heart. Fill my belly with the will of the Lord. We pray for, um, I, for I forgot her name already, Jesus. Yeah, if it's for you, take it. Help me. Type her name back in. Um, there's what, what's going on with her. There's some unfairness. Ah, Jesus, help me. I should be taking notes. I'm sorry, guys. There's some unfairness. She's been mishandled. She's been mishandled. Is that what I got out of that? Father, in the name of Jesus, we're praying for this um, woman that our sister is getting. Miss Patricia, her husband, her husband, her husband is okay. So this is her husband that's been mishandled. We're praying for this family. Where you guys are, let's just pray for the family. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that as the woman of God goes over to minister, to love on, to pray for, that you will put wisdom in her mouth, that you would give them her husband. It, her husband is mis mishandling her. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Okay. So we're, we're praying for her. We thank you, God, that as she, Joyce goes over to be a voice of comfort, a voice of reason, a voice of friendship, that she would be the voice of the Father. She would be the voice of the Father. Thank you in the vocal cords of Joyce that there is words of self-esteem, that there's words of the love of the Father, that there's words of hope, that there's words of a peaceful future, that there's words of comfort, that is the word of the Lord, that this woman, when she's in the presence of Joyce, that she would not feel or even sense her, that she would feel and sense you. God, we need a divine moment. God, we need you. We need the presence of you to overtake them as they sit in a room, to overtake them as they look eyeball to eyeball in the name of Jesus. And so we're praying for angels. We're praying for covering of her life. We're praying, God, for every place in her that's been damaged, for every place in her that's been damaged by the hand of someone that was to love her. Thank you, God, that you supersede. Thank you, God, that you overrule. And so in your presence, would you bang your gavel, God, of restoration over this particular life in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the testimony. We thank you for the life. We thank you for what she's been through. Now God honor her with restoration. Honor her with restoration. Honor her with hope for a future. Honor her with expectation. Put her back together again. Oil of joy. And God, even when she, when the woman of God hugs her and embraces her, let it be an embrace for deliverance. Let it be, God, that she's literally hugging the presence of God and that you are infusing her with strength and power and comfort. And so, God, let this be easy for our sister. Thank you that it will not be taxing to her body. Thank you will not be taxing to her mind. Thank you that you built her for this. Thank you that she will go in and she will come out. She will go in and she will come out. She will go in and she will come out in the name of Jesus. And so we link arms with our sister and for power, for strength, for energy in Jesus' name. And we cover her, crown of her spiritual head to the soles of her natural feet. She will go in and she will come out. And for anybody that's on this scope and is just feeling down. Aw. We pray for them. Aw. We pray for them. God, we pray for his neighbors. In this time, we pray for them because there's nothing like Oh, wow. Wow. There's nothing like separation and divorce and holidays. We're praying, God, that for both of them, their, their mental state, their mental capacity. Hmm. We pray, God, for their emotions. If there's any kids involved. We're praying for them, God. We're praying for Pinky757. I don't know what your real name is, woman of God. We're praying comfort for you. We're speaking um, comfort to you. We're decreeing and we're praying over you that you and your family, Sabrina, Sabrina, that Sabrina, you and your family, or other family members, siblings, would grieve properly. 
will grieve properly. You're in a time of grieving. And so we're praying that the Holy Spirit will hold you, that in this time you will see the sides of God that will sit with you and with questions that will sit with you in the moments where you miss them. There's nothing like losing a parent. There's nothing like losing a parent, especially when you're young and you lost both of them. And so God, in her days to come, I thank you, God, for sending her people who will mother and father her, who will love her. Yeah. And they won't take the place. They're not going to take the place. But they will, they, will, they will be to her what she needs. Father, we're praying that she would never be without the voice of love, the lap of love, the embrace of love. That around every corner, every season of her life, that you will send her people who will love her genuinely, love all of them genuinely, and love them wholly. But for this season, these holy days, as her family comes together, may they be strength for one another. May they, may they see that their family get tighter and tighter. We're praying the comfort of Jesus. We're praying the presence of Jesus. And even for our sister Sabrina, as she goes to bed at night and she arises and goes to bed and arises and goes to bed and arises, God, we're praying that you would meet with her in her dreams that this set of days means something to the rest of her life. And so we're standing with you, Sabrina. You can, you can email me whenever you want. It's in my profile. Email me. Give me your, um, give me your, your number, if you don't mind. I would love to just listen to you. I would love to just pray for you. It's, it's, it's one thing to pray. Um, thank you, Narissa. It's one thing to pray for you, but it's another thing just to be there for you. And so if you just need someone to just sit on the other end of the phone and just listen, I'm saying to you that I'm, I'm more than down. So not only am I, do, do I desire to pray for you, we, I desire to walk with you. I lost my dad when I was 21, and it's like I don't have a mother, if you know what I mean. Um, and it was crazy. And I know you've got more sense and wisdom than I do, but it would have been nice to... So I'm saying to you, you're not alone. And you're not alone, but if you just... Then let us be here for you, okay? Because we're not just going to pray for you and send you on your way. That guy, is that ain't what life is about? Let's not... In Jesus' name go your way. No. Shasta's family, guys, has lost um, your cousin. Lost your cousin, right? Shimakai lost somebody very near and dear to her. She's not on tonight, but we're praying for her. We're praying for Shasta's family. We're praying for them, but if you are, you know, and a brother-in-law, if you have some people in your life that have lost people in this particular season, guys, it's hard. This is a crazy time to lose people. This particular season right here. So Shasta, we're praying for your family. You already know you have a group of people praying for your family. But we're just praying for, you guys have just been under a lot of stress. And when you're praying for people, and when you're the prayer warriors, and when you're the people who are always speaking faith, always speaking faith, always, 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 sometimes you just need a minute to process and to grieve. And so I'm praying for Latrice, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for the other people in your family that are, you know, praying, 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 that you guys would just get a moment. That it would not wear and tear over your natural life and your body. And that God is going to step up people around you to pray for you and just kind of stand in for you so you can fall back a little bit because that's how God works. You have no idea how people have been calling out your particular family. So Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever is going on over this family, whatever is going on particular with Shasta's family, with being hit after being hit after being hit after being hit after being hit, after being hit Father, what is this? This is not normal. And so we're shining a light of prayer 
And we're saying to you, God, give us the words to pray, to decree, and to enforce. We release, release and unleash the spirit of wholeness and life over this family. From the oldest to the youngest. And wisdom at every turn. Knowledge at every turn. But she has people standing in the gap. And God, we are saying over this family, not on our watch enough. Enough. We believe in miracles. Shasta believes that you're the God of miracles. Hand of the living God that works miracles. Sweep through this family the same way sickness and death has tried to sweep through this family. You are stronger. You are stronger. But for Latrice and Shasta, and for anybody else that I don't know their name, we're praying for them a moment of reprieve. A moment of reprieve. A moment of reprieve. And we cover their bodies, we cover their minds, and we cover their emotions. We lift up Shimakai. We pray for our sister. Great transition she's in. And she's lost someone near and dear to her. We're praying her strength and her comfort. Her fortitude. In Jesus' name. For everybody that's missing somebody, this is not a season to be sad, but that we will do everything decent and in order. Guys, the true cycle of life has death is included. Sleep is included, right? True cycle of life. We cannot live forever. We were not built to live forever. It still hurts like crap when people leave. It hurts like crap. But let's celebrate the memories we do have. Let's celebrate the life we do have. And so any false sadness or depression that's trying to come upon you, trying to come upon even people in your life, in Jesus' name. Yes, I wanted to pray about, um, I just wanted to pray about the holidays, Black Friday, Thanksgiving, airports, especially. Oh, I did not. I did not know that, Jacqueline. I did not know that. Um, we're praying for you. I did not know that. We're praying for you, Mama. Guys, there's nothing like it. You know what I mean? I mean, we're, we're just you. You've had a year. You've had a year. You've had a year. And it's been your birthday, and. Um, yeah, there is. There's a lot of losses happened this year in a lot of places, yeah. We know the hand of God is on you. We, you know, prophesied some things over you, but you just entered into your new year. Her birthday just happened, guys, last week. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your daughter. We thank you for this new year. We thank you for these new moments. Everything that she lost outside of her mom, person, mom, but even with the loss of her mom, um, she had her mom. She, her, the legacy of her mom is living in her. We thank you, Father, for all the other things that look like loss. We decree over Jacqueline that this was her time of promotion, that this has been a great year of promotion. We thank you, God, that you're shaking some things in her life. We thank you, Father, that even if there is a mentality, I'm just going to decree this over you, okay? If anybody feels like this is for them, I just need you to take it. Well, there's been so much loss. Well, there's been so much just hard move. Just, you know, a lot of 
um, oppression, not oppression, but a lot of resistance. Thank you, Lord. A lot of resistance, a lot of hindrance trying to come against you and you just get tired and you just, you know, you just try to hold on just for the sake of holding on that God is going to energize you and you're getting ready to arise, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The glory of God rising upon you is a place of promotion. And so father, we thank you for the infusing. We thank you for the exploding, the glory explosion upon Jacqueline and her life, this leg of her life, these next days, these next years, these next uh, decades, Father. We thank you, God. We pray her into her seat of promotion. We we thank you for her seat of, of, of authority, God. Thank you that you will begin to fill her mouth with your words, with your words, not Anise words, not Jacqueline words, not the preacher's words, but the word of the Lord will be downloaded into the mouth of Jacqueline. We decree over the these next 365 days that she will live in the seat of Isaiah 65 and 24, that the word of the Lord would be her thoughts. That the word of the Lord will be in her mouth. That the word of the Lord will be her actions. That the word of the Lord will be her conversation. And that God, you will begin to answer yourself. That when she speaks, you are answering yourself. That when she thinks, you are answering herself. That when she's in conversation, you are answering yourself. And so God, thank you for great elevation in the name and in the blood of Jesus. And so break off of her anything in her mindset that does not align with Isaiah 65 and 24. She will not be held down or held back by what happened in this year. God, we bless you that you are even reframing that which she walked through this year. You are reframing it for your glory. You shall drain the glory. You shall drain every drop of the glory. And so, God, we begin to clap our hands. We shout to you with the voice of triumph for new wine skins. Then you're pouring in new wine. We decree and declare that 2018 will be the year of new wine. And new wineskins. We decree and declare that over 2018, this will be the year of new, new stuff, new things, new relationships, new friendships, new opportunities, new, 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 new. And every entity that wants to fight against and war against the sound of new, the sound of new reverberating, the Lord God be against you. The blood of Jesus be against you. This is new, 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 new for Jacqueline in the name of Jesus. New ministry portion, new job portion, new, 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 new. Every word curse of 2017 be ye broken. Everything that she spoke out of her mouth that does not align with where she's going in 2018 be ye broken by the sound of new 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 hallelujah and he surrounds you with the song of deliverance hmm. he surrounds you woman of god i want you to begin to look up every scripture with the word new in it every verse of scripture with the word new in it Yep, seven. Mm -hmm. Every scripture with the word new in it. And I just want you to write them. I don't want you to post them. I don't want you to memorize them. I don't want you to read them. And I want you to go to bed. I want you to get up. I want you to mumble them. New, 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 new. You about to get up and you about to war. You about to war. You thought you was one tough cookie. You are. But what's on the inside of you, you about to war. You about to come out swinging with a new energy, with a new level of spirituality, with new prayer, with a new sound, with a new worship, new. It had to go down like this. And that's what I want you to say. I want you to walk around and I want you to, to declare it had to go down like this. Because if it didn't, I wouldn't get the new. And so we just welcome the new. We speak to the new and we say, come find her. So spirit of the living God, 
Thank you for what you have already accomplished and the life of your dear daughter. She is not broken. She is new. She is not broken. She is new. She is not broken. She is new. And I want you to write that down. I don't want you to say that. New, come find me. New, come on. Come on. Come find me. Come on. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. New of God. New of God. Come on in. New of God. Come on in. Hallelujah. Come on in. Come find me. Come on in, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, you're not broken. You're not broken. Because you're still here in the hand of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I think I got everybody. Did I get everybody? So happy birthday to you. We honor you and we love you. For everybody on here, I just want to with your dream. We're going to do yours tomorrow. We're going to do yours tomorrow. I got it. Are you talking about your dream? Yeah, your dream. Yeah. Y'all want to hear her dream? Because this is the dream we're going to do the other day. It's, I felt like it was super easy. Are you just want to wait till tomorrow? I try to do them in order as I receive them. So yeah, so I still kind of do want to do the dreams and the, just not, we're not interpreting them. That's on you. We're just suggesting and practicing. That's it. Oh, y'all are like, let's hear it. We know, we, we, we did some of them. I'm getting on my computer now, guys. Let me find it. Yeah, so if you go back and you watch, maybe oh, you're sweet. No, not mine. Okay, y'all ready? I have it. Y'all ready? And she already told me she was. I try to. If you want to remain anonymous, you got to tell me. Yeah, you missed one about the stakes. That's the one we did today. Rosette's dream, um, her son had. Then there was someone who was anonymous and there was um, a, a lady and a work and tables. And so we did those. And so this is, and then we did, so we did four. So this will be our fourth one. Okay. I had a dream. Are y'all ready? Will you let us know if we missed something in interpretation? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Did we did we finish yours? Yes, that was the one. Steak, the sun dream. See, look at you, Narissa. Yes, Candace. Did, did we finish yours or did I just hit totally off track? I'm so sorry. Oh, y'all gotta keep me straight. Y'all gotta. It's okay if you come for me and be like, Anise, ma'am, dear, sweetie. Can you stay focused? Um Yes, you had a theme. Yes, you had a theme. And that's what I asked. If you go back, <laughs> hey, Sandrika, if you go back to when we were doing it, I, I kept saying, what is the theme? What is the theme? And the theme is judgment. So that's when I went into that whole long spill about judgment. And so for you, Candace, um, you are not materialistic. Candace is not materialistic. She's very... She's not high maintenance, but you are high maintenance. Meaning you have high expectation. You're a woman of excellence, even though you're really cool. So it's kind of like this oxymoron kind of thing that's going on here. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Um, I want to say it's like Wednesday and Thursday, man of God. I want to say it's like Wednesday and Thursday. The theme, yes, that was her dream. The theme was judgment. 
how she was ju not judgment of God, like the wrath of God. Hey, 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 woman of God. No, 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 not the wrath of God, but how she was judging what God was doing in her life. How she was judging the movement of God and the hand of God, that it was coming in places that she wouldn't necessarily approve or, or choose for herself if she had her own way, if you will. And so going forward, God is taking Candace some places and you don't mind if I'm, if, cause I want, if this is a teaching moment and I'm not coming for you cause you know, I love you. Okay. I'm not, I'm not. this is for all of us. <laughs> this is for all of us. When God moves you and we, and you're really moving into the, what am I? Remember she just did some really big leaps. And so she's moving in the what am I, not the who am I. You are on, you are going down God's road and God's lane. And remember, it's not about you. It's about the people that God will send you and the tables that you will sit and the people who will sit across from you. You may be, you may be how they see Jesus. You may be the only introduction to Jesus that they've ever had. And so a lot of times we don't want to go into places. We don't want to sit at tables you know, that we would necessarily choose. But God is, said, God is saying that through you, I'm really concerned about the one. I'm really concerned about the ones in your family. I'm really concerned about all sorts of things that most people aren't concerned with. And I'm really saying who will go for us for the one? Who will go for us for the one? And so what do you do, Candace, when God says you are the miracle? That a great cry has arisen out of a particular zip code. That a great cry has arisen out of a particular place. That you would not go if you got your way in your trajectory. And so I take you up and down, around, sideways, all of these things because I need you to meet with people. Jesus said, I must needs go by Samaria. It wasn't because he was so thirsty for that particular water. It was because... He needed, he needed to have a meeting with the one. And so when we take these big leaps and, and we're thinking about what's going on in my space, what's going on in my box, what's going on with my finances, what's what, what, and God is saying, if you would just move out from that, when you look at that narrative with the prophet, he, he was the reason why he was eating from the raven anyway, because he prophesied that. God honored what he prophesied, but God has got the, the raven and the brook sustained him until the lady was getting ready to run out of substance. Do y'all see that? God sustained him up until the moment she was getting ready to bake the last one and die. So God had him sustained by the raven and the brook until the right moment because it wasn't about him. It was about her. Candace, sweetie baby, God is using you on levels that you didn't, you've never dreamed of. You, you, you will not know until you meet with him face to face what your obedience means, especially in this time. Let me say this to you. Let me just get this out of the way. For every person who has had to go to an unemployment line, for every person who's had to go to a food pantry, for every person who's had to go sit somewhere and you were like, I've never been here, I've never had to do this before. It was the person to your right and your left that God was concerned about. God, what do you do when God says, I'm going to take your life and you're still on this trajectory. You're still going here, but I need you to go over here for a little bit. And it's not because I'm mad at you. It's not because I'm not providing for you. It's not because you heard me wrong. It's not because I'm taking you through. It's because I'm after the one. Everything that God said to you, Candace, so shall it be. God is sustaining you. It may not look what you want. It may not be at the timetable. It may not have been what you feel me. You know what I'm saying? However, however, God is using you. God is using you, divine, thank you. God is using you. It's going to get better. Pull back a little bit. Pull back a little bit. Yeah, pull back a little bit. She's, she's such a woman of, of, I'm hearing the Lord say great character, and she's such a woman of excellence. So she's not, she's, she's not high maintenance, but she is. 
And I mean that in the most like respective way that I can, respectable way that I can. She's not high maintenance. Like she cool. Like she'll give you, she'll give you the stuff off her back. She will give you whatever, but she has a certain rhythm. She has a certain expectation. She's a certain standard. So that's when she was looking at the meat. Remember, she told us in her interpretation, uh, the meat didn't have grill lines. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, baby. But she was like, I like it like this. And it didn't have no grill lines. I was not one of that. <laughs> and so everybody was eating the meat without the grill lines. <laughs> and she didn't, you feel me? But she loves steak. Pull back a little bit. You sitting across from your cousin who's gay. Pull back a little bit. Everybody on here, I need you to see your life as not who am I, but what am I? And for some of us, right now, you're a miracle. You. You are the miracle. You will go into some places where people have no hope and your hope. There are some people who are journeying towards death and you're going to show up and you're going to present people. You're going to make people be confronted with Jesus. And you're like, oh, what's going on? Ah, ah, I can't stand this. Ah. And God is saying, yeah, I need you to pull back off of that a little bit. Candace. I need you to get your fight back. I need you to get your gur back. I need you to get that rumble back. I need you to go forth, even if the outcome is not producing what you have, you know, projected for it to produce, it is still producing. And what it is producing is a seed. And you are sowing that seed that it is producing. And the 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 outcome, the harvest of that seed, is gonna far outweigh your little outcome. God's going to open up some doors for you supernaturally that you didn't even see coming. You think you, you don't know. It ain't what you think. So she got the theme, you know, y'all feel me? So she, she got the theme, but here's the thing. It is not for us. It is not up for you to interpret it. We're not going to do that on here. We're going to suggest. And then you are, it's your responsibility to go into the presence of God, get the interpretation, tell us, and we're just going to pray it. Hallelujah. All right, y'all ready for, does that make sense to you, woman of God? Where you at? All right, so y'all ready for our next one? This is this is pretty easy. Y'all probably gonna get this. But she still, she still is gonna be tasked with going and getting the, um, she, with emailing me the, interpret, the, the last interpretation, what the Lord has said. So for everybody that's, that's on here, because it, it gets, y'all be like, yes, I'm ready. And then I'll read it and y'all are just like, <laughs> courage and faith, courage and faith, courage and faith. This is a safe place to mess up. Clean out the pipe, get your rhythm. How does God speak to you? What do you see? What is your methodology? What works? What doesn't work? Okay. I had a dream that my husband and I moved from an old house, but we still had a couple of more things to get out of the house. We got to the house, the old house. We got to the house, we were standing outside and it was like a third person was with us. The person whom I never saw their face said to me, the person who had no face said to her that she needed to cast demons out of her husband. I said, me? And he said, read Luke 6, one through 40. Luke 6, 1 through 40. After that, I began to open my mouth and links of meat started coming out. Read, he says, read Luke 6, 1 through 40. She opens her mouth. Links of meat start coming out of her mouth. She tries to pull all the meat out of her mouth and a portion of it broke off. Yes, meat. 
Mm -hmm. Links of meat. So I'm thinking it was like meat that was like sausage, sausage links, because she said links. So, you know, when, and I, I'm just seeing, she on so she can correct this. I'm just seeing, you know, in them like cartoons where they would like pull out and it would be like link to link to link to link, link to link to link, the meat, link to link to link. Mm hmm. Um, mm hmm. Sauce, mm hmm. Links of meat started coming out. I tried to pull all the meat. Um, but she's on so she can correct this if, if that's not right, if she meant something else. I tried to pull the meat out of my mouth and a portion of it broke off. So I went in the house to try to find something to help me get the rest of the meat out. And when I got inside, there was a man to paint the house. I never said hi to him and he held up a shirt and said, this is a nice shirt you left. So she goes in to get something to pull the meat out of her mouth. There's a man in there to paint the house. He holds up a shirt and he says, this is a nice shirt you left. I turned around and the shirt had 88 on the front of it. 88. Holds up a shirt. Take the shirt. 88. I said, oh, I've been looking for that shirt. I took it and put it in the trunk and we left the house. I'm going to what she said. That was it. So I'm going to what she said. Mm -hmm. Eight is new beginnings. What else? And that means surplus of seven. I'm just playing. But there was there was two eights on there. So what what is that? Let me find it. Let me let me read you her interpretation. I'm not going to read your interpretation. I'm going to read your interpretation tomorrow because I want you guys to read the chapter. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to read Luke 6, 1 through 40. All right. Husband and wife, new beginnings. Are you writing this down? Write, write, write it down. Husband and a wife, new beginning. What else do you think? Mm -hmm. Luke 6, 1 through 40. I want everybody, if you if you want to, you know, give more spiritual, new beginning, elevation in the spirit with authority. Okay, Jacqueline. Um, new beginning, elevation in the spirit with authority. Power, where are you guys seeing this at? Where, where are you picking this at at? So she can know, because she's taking notes. Where are you seeing power? Please pray for me, homeless looking for a police. If, okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, everybody let's pray for um, our sister. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for opening up a place to stay. Where are you staying at now? Are you staying with somebody? Are you staying on, like, just staying with somebody temporarily? We thank you, God, for, um, for opening up a new residency. We thank you for whatever's going on with the finances, a new job, or if she has a business. Father, we thank you for grace for where she is. Thank you, God, for uh, people who will sow and give in her time of need. Thank you for using people in her life. Thank you that it is a safe place. But, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for opening up new opportunities for our sister. We thank you, God, for keeping her in the place of hope and the place of faith. And so, God, we're praying into the side of you that is resource. God, you are the source of every resource. Money is nothing to you. It's a small thing for you. And so, God... Thank you, God, that people have things that they need to get rid of and there are opportunities that she knows um, that she doesn't even know of. Thank you that you will connect her. Thank you that this will be a season for connectivity with our sister. Father, 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 we are praying into the miracles of the master. We're praying, God, that this will be a miracle week for our sister. We are praying, God, that you would keep her and hold her. But then but as she transitions into 2018, that she will have an amazing testimony of what you did in the last weeks of 2017. 2017. And so we pray for even where she is. We pray for people who would come and help her. Every person who is a voice of help, every person who is a hand of help, every person who is called to be a resource for her in this season, let nobody hold nothing back. Let nobody hold nothing back. Let nobody walk away. Thank you for putting her name, her name. 
Do you need a do you need a job? Are you in need of employment? You need a second job. Okay. Are you are you need a better job? <laughs> Amen. So Father, we thank you. Um, are you on LinkedIn? Are you on LinkedIn? If you're not on LinkedIn, I need you to get on LinkedIn if you can. Um, I'm gonna send you, okay. I'm gonna send you um, the name of a recruiter. I'm gonna send you the name of a recruiter. And so Father, even if the recruiter that I'm hooking her up with can't find her, something better, something better, that she will pass her to another recruiter, pass her to another place. God, we thank you for opportunity upon opportunity upon opportunity in the name of Jesus to come upon our sister. And if anybody else has any recruiters or anybody, what, where do you live? What state are you in? What state are you in? Arizona? Okay. If, if, if there are people on here who see this and they know people in Arizona or they know connections, we're praying for Arizona. We're praying that this will be a good place for her. We're praying for opportunity. We're praying for people rallying around her. We're praying for people who are the distributors of glory, the distributors of resource to come around her in this season of her life in the name of Jesus. What type of work do you do? Man, God asks. Customer service. Okay. Okay. Um, my email is on the profile. If you can email me, if you would email me, and I'm going to give you the information for the recruiter. Okay. I'm going to see if I know anybody that's in Arizona for passports. Okay. 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 We're believing it's breaking. Sister, stay in the fight. Give no attention to discouragement. The hand of God the plan of God, the hand of God and the plan of God, the hand of God and the plan of God. And God's decision over your life in this particular time. So we're praying with you. We're standing with you. If anybody got any resources, email your girl and I will put y'all in contact or I will pass it on. So we're not just going to be praying. We're going to be praying and doing at the same time. Praying and doing at the same time. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay. All right. So email me, please, so I can get that to you. Okay? You're loved. We love you. And, um, and you're not alone. You're not alone. We love you. And we know there's many of us on here that know what that's like. So, yeah, I don't like that praying for people like you patting them on the head and then you send them on their way. That's why, guys, we got to be, I know you guys are like, Anise is getting off task again. This is why it's so important. You've got to be glory distributors. I'm so serious. This shouldn't be. We should always be in a place where we can help. We should always be in a place where we have tons of connections. Y'all hear me? Tons of connections. I need you guys to start networking. I will, even if I do a scope on to teach you how to network, we need to do a scope where we can I can teach you how to network if you don't know how to network properly. We should have net you should have a network, you should have a robust network. If I can't give you money, at least let me give you my network. I let my network do the work. We should be storehouses of resource, all sorts of resources. And we've got to start building. We've got to start working on that. We've got to start working on that. We should be able, come on, people join sororities and they join all of these organizations. And, you know, you're supposed to call somebody up and they're supposed to. Why can't we do that? And that's what 2018, you've got to amass You've got to amass contacts. You've got to, um, come on guys. You've got to amass opportunities, not for yourself, but every time you hear of an opportunity, let's write it down. We've got to keep a Rolodex of opportunities because we, 
we, we've got to be able to be a place of opportunities and doors of opportunities for our brothers and sisters, if that makes sense. I should be able to send you money to buy your groceries. Right? Anyway, let me get off that. Let me get off that. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's the key. We've got to work on it. We've, we've got to do it. You feel me? And, and that's what I'll that's we'll be like, that's my heart. I can't wait for the day. I go into, no problem. We're going to keep praying, woman of God. I go into the grocery store and I just buy, you get groceries and you get groceries and you get groceries and you get groceries. And God is saying, I've already said yes to that. So why are you not doing it? Right? And so 2018 has got to be the year where lives are set up to distribute to distribute, you know, and, and here's the thing, even if Denise is putting, you know, $20 a week away just to buy people's groceries, it ain't much, you know, at the end of the week, I mean, at the end of the month, it's 80 bucks, you know, that's not much in the world of grocery buying, but it's a start. And so if we're not doing it now, if we're not pump getting people's gas on the regular now, then when you get all the money, you know, later on, you won't do it then either. Why? Because you haven't made a practice of it. There is no difference between now and then. Y'all feel me? There's no difference between now and then. $5 now is still going to feel like $5 then. There's no difference. So we have to do something to say, I'm working toward this. If you go to a church, I hear people, oh my gosh, my church doesn't do anything. They don't be giving no money. They don't be doing no groceries. They don't be blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. Whatever. What are you doing? What am I doing? Yeah. Even if you just put a little bit to the side, even if you just put a little bit to the side every day, you know what I mean? Or every week, or you buy a gas card, you know, I tithe, I sew, and now I'm going to start buying one gas card a month. And I do that for three months. And then after that, I buy three gas cards a month. And I do that for three months. And then I buy six gas cards a month. And I do that for three months. That honors God. That honors God. Or you link up with a shelter. And I think this is one of the things I'm going to do. Linking up with the shelter and buying produce. Buying bags of apples, bags of oranges, you know, for, for people who are in shelter so that they can have um, access to healthy food. And it's not, it's not like, ooh, like I bought a shelter and I'm supplying rooms and no, 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 I may not be able to do that right now, but what can I do? What I can do, I should do to develop, yes, to develop that muscle. If I'm not doing it now, I will not do it later. Consistently. Did y'all catch that? Consistently. I, I just can't have, I just cannot be prayer, have a lifestyle uh, of worship, right? Giving and all of that is inside of that. Jesus moved with compassion. What did he do? He was like, feed him. <laughs> right? Now that we've given them the spiritual stuff, we got to give them the natural stuff. Feed him. Pay for daycare for people. Yeah, we, we definitely do. We worship more with our actions than we do with... We can do that all day, but what are you doing with your real life, right? Right? Uh, paying for daycare for people. If we could take the daycare off of some families, they would thrive. They would just thrive. If they could just get that off of their back for a minute, they, they could thrive. Okay, I'm going to stop. So maybe we'll, we'll get on and we'll, we'll talk about networking if y'all want to. Teach you how to network. All right. So the dream. I want you guys to read the scripture. Did you guys take notes on? Um, yes, which yep. Yeah, not not one day soon. That's got to be one day now. It's got to be one day now. I've got to do something to remember. To remember people. It's 
got to be now. Y'all feel me? So just start doing something. So just make a list of some things that you're going to do on the regular. But start now. Let's start now. Let's start now. Um, so I want you to read the, the scripture. And then we're going to, um, tomorrow, the first thing we do when we get on. Yeah. <laughs> but I need you to read the scripture. There's a little more to it. That's why I don't want to, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, self-explanatory until you read the scripture. I mean, and then you need to pair it, not until you need to pair it with the scripture. It's very, and so again, you know, when, when I, when I read it to you, it's like, oh, it's this, this, and this, um, Luke six, Luke six, one through 40. So it looks like it's like, oh, it's this, this, and this. And then when you read the scripture, it's a little bit deeper. It's a lot of bit deeper. And it's like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got to take all of it, the totality, and then I want you to chew, you know, when you read the scripture, pair it. So the first thing we'll do tomorrow when we get on is you will, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and start kind of going through her dream. Amen. So I love you guys. Did we, did we get everyone? I pray that we did. It's the best week ever. I love you guys. We're awesome. You're awesome. It's all groovy. Amen. Um, go and register for Alexis Dream um, webinar. I love you too. Please email me. Please. I love you too. <laughs> I can always count on you, Miss Patrice, to make me laugh. Right. No. I never cook on Thanksgiving. I don't like turkey and hey we hey 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 we pray for you we love you we're praying for you we love you mm -hmm. we love you yep yep mm -hmm. so all right guys um we'll be on tomorrow at seven and um we're on for two hours all right good night love you guys <laughs>